Today we are driving to the city of Rotorua, which we just learned means two lakes. But Rotorua is like the <coughs> North Island's mecca of geothermal hotspots. So there's geysers, there's bubbly hot water, there's mud baths, there's hot water spas, and we're just gonna go see what it's all about. Yesterday we talked to our bus driver who is Maori, the first peoples of New Zealand. And because Rotorua is a place where they have a lot of Polynesian Maori cultural shows, I just said, listen, tell me, should we invest our money in doing these cultural experiences? And he said, no. <laughs> the best way to do it is to just go to the different sites that have importance to the Maori people. And then he just, he told us some cool stuff. Like in 2023, they have finally come to an agreement, the Maori people and the British colonizers, that as of 2023, they will have 50% representation in the government, which is a huge win for them. So we're learning as we go without going to these shows. <laughs> Starting off our day at Waiatapu. 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 It is a thermal pool, really famous in the area, and we can already taste the sulfur. <laughs> All right, right next to the entrance of the park, there's a little tiny bridge, and there are stairs down, and there is a free area to go in the thermal river. We're a little creeped out. We're gonna do it anyway. There's a sign that says there's meningitis and that it's fatal if it gets in your nose. Is it too hot or fine? It's hot. I mean, it's not too hot. Woo! Woo! Ow! Oh! Okay. Oh, that's really hot when you actually put your whole body in. I found a rock to perch up on. All right, it's been five minutes and I'm sweating. Sweating, and we're only half in. It's hot. A hot, hot tub is like 105 degrees. That's really hot. This is what that is. I was reading online that it, I think it's 39 degrees Celsius, which is hundred or so, maybe yeah. more. Mm -hmm. The earth is weird. <laughs> like we're just sitting in this really hot, steamy pool. That smells like crap. Of geyser water. <laughs> well, you don't need a lot of time here. It's so hot. It's so hot, but it's worth a pit stop. You good? So Rotorua is surrounded by dozens, if not hundreds of geothermal spots. And a lot of them come with a really steep price tag. So one of the ones that you can go to is right in town and it's free, it's just in the local park and it's called Quirao. It's right in the middle of town and there's bubbling mud. It would be like going to your Central Park and there's bubbling mud. Except a fourth the size of Central Park. <laughs> it's just weird. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Bubbling mud. Just in the middle of town. Um, this looks like straight up ice age. <laughs> like <laughs> bubbling, <laughs> bubbling piles of mud. City park. Whoa. Boiling lava mud. Listen. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So the sign says, where you can see steam coming from the ground, or you can see white, brown, or orange, there's a new feature forming, AKA this huge, <laughs> large area. <laughs> ah. What? Wait, is it mud? No. We found the biggest one. 
Just a reminder, this is a city park. <laughs> this would 100% be like a state or national park at home. Like, obviously, I think of Yellowstone because I basically grew up there. This is it. Minus Old Faithful. Just in town. <laughs> <laughs> Can you taste it? <laughs> into it and it is $88 per person so we thought how can we see these glowworms without doing that well here's our answer we had no idea but our hostel has all of these recommendations on the wall and we saw glowworms as one of them <laughs> and we were like holy crap let's try and see them tonight and the guy at the hostel said there are bleep loads of them meters at the roundabout oh. Oh. the second exit So we've hung out here for a while, waiting for it to get dark. I don't think it's dark enough, but we're just hitting the trail to see if we can, you know, find our way around, know what we're getting ourselves into. And it's a little creepy, we're alone. So far, no glowworms, but again, I don't think it's dark enough yet. Oh my gosh, it's we dark. found them. Look, you can see them in the camera. Can you? Just like little tiny dots. Look, come in here. What the heck? Look at those. Yep. Okay, now I know. Okay. okay. I thought they were like hanging from trees. They're like little constellations. So we've been walking around forever. We almost gave up. We went back to the car. Oh, sorry, <laughs> it went away. And right off the driveway, there are these little glowy dots. This is the craziest They're thing I've ever seen. Blue and turquoise. Wherever we go, we try and see as much nature or animals as we possibly can. And that was one that we didn't think that we would see, but we just got to see them for free and they're really cool. They're literally these little like turquoise blue dots. The camera doesn't capture it, but they literally light the way of the path. You just come out around the corner and they love the dirt edge of the hillside. They're, they're not really in the plants. They make their little webs inside of the hillside. Mm -hmm. And we ran into a local guy who was hiking at night like a weirdo, but... I was like, Braden, it's killer. <laughs> <laughs> but he was just on a night hike like Kiwis do. Yeah. But uh, he was telling us that they light up to attract food and then they catch the flying insects in their little web, they eat them, and they live to be like seven years old and then they turn into an adult seven years later and once they're an adult, they die in two days. 
<laughs> so they're like this beautiful creature. And then he said it turns into this like gnat type thing. He was like, it's really ugly. And then, and then it dies. But it was super cool, totally worth it. I can completely see why people pay to go in the cave. We're just on a budget and traveling for so long that it doesn't really make sense for us, but we're so stoked that we got to see that and that was a really cool way to end the day. Yeah.